This is a Fuji GSW 692. I've been using this camera for about three months now. I've put a lot of rolls through it, about 30 rolls to be exact. So let's talk about it. If you're new here, my name is Ebby. I'm a film shooter based in Toronto, Canada. Let's jump right into the video. This is a fully mechanical six by nine fixed lens rangefinder camera with a 65 millimeter f 5.6 lens, which is about a 28 millimeter field of view in 35 millimeter terms. It has a leaf shutter and produces six by nine images that are exceptionally sharp. In this video, I'm going to talk about a brief history of the camera, talk about the physical design of the camera, what it feels like to hold and shoot with the camera, as well as my likes and dislikes when it comes to actually using the camera. The first model of the camera, the GSW 690, was released in March of 1980 and was manufactured up to 2003 with the final version, the Fuji GSW 693, which was retired. This version I have here is the second iteration, which was released in 1985. There are some slight differences between all three versions in terms of design, weight, functionality, but they all shoot six by nine images in 120 and 220 format. This camera also has a brother or sister, depending on how you look at it, called the GW690. But the main difference between the GW and the GSW is the lens. The GW has a 90 millimeter and the GSW has a 65 millimeter. So it covers a wider range of view, which is why I like it. This camera and its brothers and sisters are commonly referred to as the Texas Leica. That's because the system, the rangefinder system that you find in it sort of resembles the Leica. And the images that come out of this camera are sharp, kind of like a Leica. And the Texas portion comes from it being so big and huge in size. And they always say everything's bigger in Texas. I haven't personally been to Texas, so I can't confirm that. But the fact that it's big and the fact that it has a rangefinder style system and shoot images like a Leica is where the Texas Leica comes from. In terms of design, this camera has quite a simple design. There's no light meter and only has basic controls. The aperture ring and the shutter speed are located on the front end on the lens of the camera, just beyond the focus ring. While I think this is a functional location, it does take a lot of getting used to because some people are used to having the shutter speed dial on the top of the camera and then the aperture on the lens itself. But this camera is completely different. It has both right next to each other. And if you're not careful, you can completely change it without knowing that you're changing it. But for me, I've gotten really used to it because this is the only camera that I've been using for the past couple of months. So it's become sort of second nature for me to know how to change it. I can read it, I can use it, I can function with it. It's not an issue for me. On the top of the camera, there's a number of frame selector, which can switch between three choices. Four exposures for a half roll of 120, which I've never seen before. Then you have eight exposures for your regular 120 roll, and then 16 exposures for 220 roll. For 220, you also have to flip over the pressure plate in the film compartment inside of the camera. There are two shutter releases, one at the top of the camera, on top of the frame advancing lever, and then another in the front of the camera right next to the lens. From version two onwards, on the front release of the camera, there's a shutter lock that allows you to lock the shot of the camera, which comes in handy and can be very useful so you don't waste any of the eight images that you have on this camera. The sound that comes from the shutter is really loud for a camera that has a leaf shutter. It's usually a leaf shutter is pretty mild and not that loud, but on this camera, it gets pretty loud when you take a shot. And some people blame the odometer on the bottom of the camera for that noise being so loud. And some people say it's the winding mechanism at the top of the camera. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know where it comes from. All I know is that the shutter is loud. The camera weighs about 3.25 pounds, which is about the size of a regular laptop or about 12 apples in a bag. Given the width and size of the camera, you think that the camera is weird to hold and this could be different for everyone, but I have big hands and for me, it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. I find myself actually holding it with one hand most of the time because the grip is on the right side. And I find myself actually using the front shutter more than the top, which is actually kind of weird because I've never had a camera that had two releases before. And also before this camera, I'd never shot consistently with a rangefinder system camera before. And once I've, I've gotten used to using a rangefinder and I don't see myself going back to 
other systems of zone focusing or just like finding your thing in focus with the DSLR style cameras. Rangefinders are much more compelling for me. And if you haven't used a rangefinder style system before, it's definitely, definitely gonna take some getting used to. And inside of the square, inside of the box where you see and you put your rangefinder system in place, it's actually very bright. Going in there, playing with it, using this camera, I've gotten really used to the design and the feel of the camera. And I definitely recommend it for anyone thinking of joining the rangefinder style system. Shooting with this camera is so much fun. I find myself going through so many rolls. I mean, it's only eight shots per row, but I do go through a lot of rolls when I'm using this camera. That's it about the design of this camera. Now let's jump into some of the likes and dislikes that I have with this camera. We're gonna start off with the likes. The first thing that I like about this camera is that it takes sharp images. I've used a number of cameras in my time. I've used a lot of 35 millimeter cameras. I've used six by six, six by seven, six, four, five, and none of them come close to the sharpness that you get from using this six by nine camera. I'm pretty sure it's the lens, but I'm also sure that it's the width of the film that you use when taking each shot. And the camera just gives you beautiful images. Take a look at some of these images that I've shot with this camera. They came across excellently sharp edge to edge and they give you a beautiful image every single time when you hit focus. The second thing is the feel and weight of this camera. As I said previously, I've shot with the Pentax 6x7 and I've shot with the RZ67 and the RB67 and one thing those all those cameras have is that they are heavy. They are exceptionally heavy weighing from five anywhere from five to six pounds and this camera weighs about three pounds which is like half of the size. So when I'm holding this camera, when I'm shooting this camera, I like to take my camera out with me every day. When I have it around my neck, when I have it in my hands, when I have it in my backpack, it doesn't feel like I'm carrying a dead body in my back. It doesn't feel like I'm carrying something heavy in my left hand or in my right hand. This camera gives me so much joy. It gives, allows me to shoot a lot. It allows me to play around a lot. And I truly, truly appreciate using this camera. Next thing I just need to get is some 220 film so I can get 16 shots on one roll. Another thing that I like about this camera is the two shutter release buttons. You have one at the top and one in front. And it's pretty straightforward. When I'm holding the camera sideways like this, I use the top one. When I'm holding it horizontal like this, I use the front one with my finger right there. It's just nice to have both of these options. It's nice to have, depending on which style you're shooting, it's nice to have two different buttons that can release the shutter and allow you to take the shots. Another thing that I like is something that's really small and really not really a major thing. It's just the ability to lock, lock the shutter. Right? I can't tell you how many shots I've taken on my other cameras, my RZ and my Pentax 6x7, where I've just wasted a shot because I was either putting it in my bag and I didn't lock the shutter and I've wasted so many shots that way. And with this one just being right next to the shutter that I use most of the time, I can easily just like lock and unlock when I'm shooting. When I shoot, lock it. When I'm done shooting, unlock it. It just, it just, it just works. And it's something simple, something straightforward and allows me to make use of the camera in the best possible way. Another thing that I like is, is the placement of the shutter and the aperture ring. It's right there in front of the camera. When I'm done focusing, if I feel like I need to change it, I know where all the buttons are. It clicks. Listen to the click. The click is just, the click is just beautiful. It's, it's right there in front of the camera. Some people say it's in an awkward position, but I actually like the position where it is because it allows me to change the shutter speed and aperture at the same time. I don't have to go to the top and go to the bottom. Everything is right where I need it to be. And once I'm done, I can just close this ring this top thing right here and it blocks out everything. I can just focus on shooting. The next thing is my dislikes. One thing, which is a small thing and I think people need to come to terms with is the fact that you cannot change the lens. The lens is fixed on the camera so you cannot change it. It's mildly annoying, but I like shooting wide. I always shoot 28 millimeter, depending on if I'm shooting 35 or six by seven or six by six or six, four, five. I always find a 28 millimeter equivalent. And for me, I chose this camera specifically because it's a wide angle lens versus the GW, which is a 90 millimeter. I love the 65, but it's a little bit of a dislike because sometimes I want to switch out lenses to like a 50. I want to switch out lenses to something closer. But I just find myself walking closer, but it's just it's just a little irk that I don't necessarily like all the time, just having one lens on it. So it's something that you should definitely know. 
Another dislike I have of this camera is that it only goes down to 5.6. 5.6 is not terribly bad, but sometimes I want to shoot f4, sometimes I want to shoot f3.5, sometimes I want to shoot f2.8, and I can't because this camera only goes to 5.6. Is it a big deal? No, but it's just something that I don't like. Another thing I don't like about this camera is that this front cap, it's just really loose sometimes. Like, I don't exactly know what the function is. I feel like the function is to just cover up the aperture and the shutter, but when I need to move it up, it just it sticks sometimes, sometimes it's loose. I don't know what it, the issue is with it. I just wish they had done something different with this, with this front cap thing. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. The next thing is that it only shoots eight shots on a 120 roll of film. I know, I know. Going into using this camera, I knew that it was only going to be able to take eight images on a 120 roll. It's just that with film getting expensive, with Kodak increasing prices, I love to shoot color, and Kodak basically has a monopoly on color film right now. It's just, it's just a lot to sh only get eight rolls in each roll of 120 film, and it's just, Sometimes it feels like I am I, I I just don't have enough, right? I feel like I don't have enough. Maybe I need to start shooting some 220, or maybe I just need to cut down on the shots. I find myself taking this and also my half frame camera with me because sometimes I don't need to shoot the shots on six by nine, right? So I love this camera, but it's just only eight shots on each roll. It's just it seems like a lot, and it seems sometimes seems like a waste of a shot if I shoot it on this camera. And the last thing that I don't like is the loud shutter. Sometimes I'm trying to take a shot in a discreet way in an environment where I don't want the shutter to go off. And one of the main reasons I wanted this was because it had a leaf shutter, so I assumed that was not going to be loud. But this camera is loud. And when you shoot with it, you can definitely hear the clank that comes out of it. I'm gonna play the sound for you so you understand what I'm talking about. But it's definitely a loud clank. You're definitely going to know somebody's taking a shot. It's not going to keep you hidden if you're taking a shot like this and although I do like the sound when you want the sound to be heard I don't like it when it's supposed to be quiet my last thoughts on this camera is that if you're looking to step up from 645 6x6 or 6x7 to something more of a bigger format this 6x9 camera is definitely worth it I'm not too sure how many 6x9 cameras there are out there but this one is definitely one that I did a lot of research to find. This one or the GW, you can't go wrong depending on the size of the lens or the focal length that you want to work with. Again, this is 65 millimeter, which is a 28 millimeter equivalent versus the GW, which is a 90 millimeter, which I believe is about a 40, 45 or maybe 50 millimeter equivalent. So it's definitely something worth noting before you pick this particular one up. Just because of the focal length of the lens, I wouldn't recommend this for portraits. Maybe I'll shoot some portraits with it in a later video just to talk about, so stay tuned to this channel for more. If you want to learn more about this camera, I wrote a blog post on my blog, filmstockreel.com, that I'm going to link in the, in the description down below. So feel free to check out my blog, check out some cameras, check out some of the other blog posts that I've made, and give it a shot. And yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. If this video has brought you any value, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. This goes a long way to making sure I produce more content like this. Until next time, make sure you stay safe, make sure you shoot film, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Let me take a shot of you. Just smile. Nah, I'm not going to do that. I only get eight shots in each roll. And this one's like, there's film in this right now. It's locked. I'm not going to shoot that. I'm not going to shoot it.